Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted as always, as you already know. Delighted as always to be joined by my good friend, Gary Cully. Gary, um, first and foremost, mate, you're just out the gym. Big news as well today, yes. but how are you feeling? Yeah, man, I'm buzzing. Uh, I've been, uh, do you know what? It's been a long time coming. I've been waiting for, for this chance for a long, long time, man. Kind of sometimes you see people getting opportunities and I'm, I'm looking, I'm going, am I doing something wrong here? Or well, I just, you stick to the process, trust the process. And uh, yeah, my chance is, is finally here now, man. So I'm buzzing. Well, uh, for people that don't know, that might not be on social media, uh, Miguel Vasquez, former light yes. lightweight world champion, been there with the best of Canelo, Josh Taylor. Do you know what I mean? He's been in some of the best in the UK and O'Hara Davis and Lewis Ritson as well. Tough yes, test. man. Tough, tough, tough test for you, Gary, but one you're ready for? Yeah, man, it's a big step up. Um, like you said, he's been in with Canelo twice, Josh Taylor, uh, Timothy Bradley also, he fought. Mm -hmm. Um, held the world title from 2010 to 2014 so he, he didn't just win a world title and, and lose it in his first defence he defended it I think eight or nine times so mm -hmm. um, yeah man he's uh, he's experienced he's he's been there he's done what I want to do so it's the, the perfect fight I think at the perfect time um, and yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to stepping up and showing the levels that, that I can operate at Talking about stepping up and showing the levels what does Miguel Vasquez bring to this fight that you've not what you've not seen before in your previous thirteen fights? Uh, I think everything. I think he's he's the most experienced I've fought. He's probably the most skillful I've fought. Probably the most awkward I've fought. He knows the most tricks. Like I said, he's been there. He's done it. He's he's fought in America. He's fought in Canada. He's fought in the UK. He's fought in Mexico. Um, like. He's been there and he's done it. He's got the T-shirt. He's a, he's a very, very experienced operator. And he's, he's not only experienced, he's done it at the highest level. So he, he knows everything that I need to get to know. So he's going to teach me so much. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing the ring with him. He's, uh, he's had 55 pro fights. Like I said, he's fought Canelo twice. He's fought Josh Taylor. So, um, yeah, man, I'm just really excited. Uh, it's a fight you've been calling for. I think when I was there... I mean, we spoke when in Belfast in the Titanic Centre in that big ass tent, but there was no facilities, no toilets, no freezing showers. cold. You remember freezing that? Cold freezing cold. Or, like, did you ever think that you'd get this opportunity so early in your career? Even though you've been calling for it, you've been calling for these tough fights. But again, you're still quite novice. You're still young. You're only thirteen and old. Did you ever think this opportunity will come this this early? You know what? Like I said, I've I've always known it will come. I've just been waiting for it and. You know what? I've been calling for like I've been calling for title fights since my debut, probably, yeah. and it's uh, calling for them and probably not being ready for them at the time. But uh, I've always, I've always, always believed in my ability. But I probably needed management to tell me, "Look, calm down, take it slowly, um, earn your stripes, and gain your experience." And I think I've done it the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I've only got, got thirteen fights, but I've been out for. I was out for six months for it with a with a hand injury, and then I was just out um, from from my last fight in June to my next fight in March, which is eight months. And people think all my improvement is done in the gym in between fights. So it's 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 just time for me to showcase what I've been doing in the gym. It's been a long time coming. Um, yeah, man. Like obviously we learn in fights, and uh, again, massive experience in fights. But I've been, I, I'm, I'm a gym rat. I live in the gym, so I've been, I've been working hard. I've been improving since my last fight in June, and yeah, I think it's the right time for me. Um, I'm 26 now next week, so it's it's about time I stepped up and, and start getting things moving in my career. Credit for you for doing that. I mean, you you, you mentioned there that you're buzzing for this fight, so it's a credit to you for taking this fight. But I've got to give a uh, Miguel Vasquez for taking the fight as well because some might argue that he might not want to fight in the UK ever again after obviously the Lewis Ritson fight in O'Hara. Yeah, of course. Fight. So maybe he's thinking to himself, you know what? Third time lucky, I'm going to go back to the UK and I'm probably not going to let this one go to the judges. I'm probably going to try and go in there and let this young gun know who's the who's the old dog in this fight. So are you preparing for the best Miguel Vasquez? Like I said, the O'Hara Davis fight, the Lewis Ritson fight, Probably the vast majority of the boxing world thought he won both of those fights. He definitely won both of them. And I think O'Hara Davis raised his hand after their fight. He knew 
he knew he knew he got beaten on the night and uh I'm sure when Ritson watched the fight back he probably knew as well that was a that was a crazy decision. Um but yeah man I always train hard. I can't say I'm gonna work harder than I've ever worked before because I'd be lying. I work insanely hard all the time. So uh I'm gonna be prepared. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my my one hundred percent my A game and I believe I've like I've always believed that uh, that's that's enough to operate at world level. I I didn't have to take this fight at this stage of my career. Like you said, I'm 13 and oh, this guy's had 55 fights. He's held the world title for eight fights. He's got more knockouts than I have fights. Mm. So I probably could have took another couple of a uh, couple of building fights, experienced builders, but I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible, um, and I want to operate at the highest level. So look. I'm I'm chasing greatness and uh, I want to like I said I want to operate at the highest level so these are these are the type of fights I want to be involved in even the buzz about it, it being announced today it was just massive so that's that's the type of buzz I want all the time so I don't want easy fights I've never asked for an easy fight a- any time a step up has been put to me I haven't hesitated yeah give give me give me whoever so um I trust my ability and I do you know what it's a uh, my team as well as soon as as soon as I mention a, a fight to my manager. Or, um, as soon as I mention a, a, a fight to either of my coaches, no hesitation yet, take that fight. Do you know what I mean? So we're confident and I, I believe in my ability. So um yeah, I think it's just a, it's it this is just an opportunity for me to showcase all the hard work. So um yeah, I'm ready for it, man. That being said as well, Gary, I mean we've mentioned the Lewis Richardson fight, vast majority of the boxing world thought Vasquez won. Same again with Harley Davis. For you, though, do you have to go into this fight and put on a clinic to make sure that you don't fall in the same... Like, he doesn't... That that sort of, like, bad decision doesn't fall on you again. You need to go into not, uh, Nottingham because it is on his match as well. We will talk about fighting on Mick Collin and Lee Wood on the card. Do you have to go in there and put an absolute masterclass and show everybody the skill set and how good you really are? Because you've spoke about Devin Haney's, you've spoke about Teofimo Lopez's, you've spoke about all these guys at the top of the division, but does this need to be the best Gary Cully and... Do you have to prove to everyone that you are an elite level fighter, a world level fighter? For sure, for sure. And um, I think with the opponent that that I'm going to be fighting, nobody can argue that it's not it's not as if I'm getting in against a journeyman or mm-hmm. and I'm trying to fool the public. This guy is legit, like you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been like I said, he's been there, he's done it. He's he's fought Lewis Richardson in 2020, which uh, he he won that fight. So. The only thing, no disrespect to Lewis Ritson or O'Hara Davis, Styles make fights and he's not fighting Lewis Ritson this time around. He's not fighting O'Hara Davis. He's fighting Gary Cully and he can watch all the tape he wants. But when you when you're in there, it's a it's a completely different story. And uh, I believe he's had 55 fights and I believe I'm going to give him something that he's never ever seen before. And uh, I think I think he's in for a big shock on on March 12th. That's just, like, like he's never seen before. Like we just mentioned that he's been in with Canelo and Josh Taylor and that. So that's what I'm saying. No, and he's just been just in with Canelo. No, he's, you go, he's, been in, he's been in with Canelo and I since since the fight's been talked about and we've been we've been in the gym chatting about it. I've said, Yeah, he'll teach me a couple of things and he's got the experience, but I can guarantee you he comes out of the ring and he says, Fuck, this, this kid's taught me this, or um I'll give him I'll definitely give him something he he's, he hasn't seen before. So um, yeah, I do believe that. You mentioned that he's had 54 fights, but you can also mention that he's had 10 losses. Now, he's only ever been stopped twice in them 10 losses. Uh, you're on quite a little KO streak right now with uh, uh, Simeon and uh, Kodotchikov. But I would stop at victories against two tough opponents. I mean, the Kodotchikov, no one's seen that knockout. Crack and stunning left hand, backhand down the pipe. And obviously, Simeon, mm-hmm. who's been there, done it. Hot, well, they got the t-shirt and everything like that. You you made him so almost quit. So can you go in there and be the third man to stop Miguel Vasquez? Yeah, I believe so. Um I'm obviously I'm not gonna go in chasing a stoppage. Um, but I believe I have the power in both hands if if a shot lands clean. Um I think I have I have what it takes to to get him out of there early. Um, I'm planning and I'm preparing for for the toughest and uh, the most challenging ten rounds of my career so far, and um, possibly it will go ten rounds. But either way, number one priority is is come out with the W and um, move on to bigger and better things. But I I do believe if uh, 
if I if I catch him playing, he will go. Obviously, Josh Taylor's a southpaw, and like I said, he he's probably the only one that's truly stopped him with a punch because he retired, I believe, with the South African fighter that he fought. So, have you watched yeah. the Josh Taylor fight? Being that you're both southpaws, you and Josh, you're both sort of that slender, tall sort of thing. Have you watched how Josh approached that fight against Vasquez? You know what? I haven't actually watched it yet. Pete's Pete's seen it. Um, I I don't watch much tape. I'll probably watch him in the next couple of weeks. Um, a little bit as we go deeper into camp and we're sparring and we're, we're we're talking a little bit more tactics. But I've seen his last fight, and uh, I've obviously seen the Ritson fight. I watched that one live. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, he's um, what oh, fuck? Oh, You're still there. Yeah. Yeah. What was I uh, answering, Andy? The, the watching tape, watching tape, watching tape. Watching tape oh yes, sorry. Um, yeah, I've seen the. I've obviously seen. I've seen the written fight live, and um, I haven't seen the seen the Josh Taylor fight yet. But I will. I will probably go back and watch that as he's he's a self on. He's quite tall. Um, but Pete's watched a bit of him. Pete's got tactics on him, and um. Yeah, whatever Pete says, Pete's the master, and um, I'll go in and, and work that game plan. But like I said, it's completely different when uh, when you're in there. Or you can watch all the tape you want, but when you're in there, it's completely different. I can watch him fighting Ritson, but I'm not Lewis Ritson. I can watch him fighting Josh Taylor. I'm not Josh Taylor. Mm. He can watch me fight whoever he wants. But um, when you're in there, I believe it's completely different. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to showing, showcasing my skills on, on March 12th and showing how good I am. Showcase, talk about showcasing your skills, man. Not a bad uh, card to showcase your skills on. Lee Wood, Massive. Nick Conlon, world title fight, Nottingham, 9,000 fans. There's going to be a lot of Irish there as well, Gary. Uh, I know Keeping a Jargo has been announced on the card as well. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a ton of Irish in that thing. Uh, so, do you feel any pressure? No, do you know what? It's going to be, it's going to be special. Um, I I can't wait, and whatever whatever my mind can conceive, it, it's going to be that multiplied by ten. The Irish are the best fans in the world, and the, and um, I think it's probably I think I th- wait, 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 stop, stop, second best. Nah, come on, <laughs> we beat Scottish all day long, man. Come on, uh, but yeah, I I seen seeing Mick saying he's he's talking bringing five thousand plus Irish over, um. So I think Lee Wood could have been sold a false promise by Eddie. Uh, we'll have it in your hometown. We'll have it in Nottingham. But it's going to be 75% Irish over there. And the atmosphere is going to be absolutely insane. And uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to just soak it all in. Fight week, weigh in, press conference. It's my first major show. I've been uh, I've been kind of building low key on these MTK shows. And uh not getting getting recognition, but I haven't been on the big platforms, the, the zones and the, the top ranked shows and stuff. So you were on IFL TV a good few times, mate. Yeah, I was on I, the IFL streams are great. What I'm saying <laughs> to you is I built low key, I built my career low key on MTK shows. It's not the platforms that that the zone are that the zone have and, and top rank. So this is my this is my coming out party, I think. And uh yeah, man, like I said, I'm just looking forward to, to experiencing it all, fight week, weigh in, all of it. I'm just I'm just going to soak it all in and, and get used to it because this is going to be the first of many. You, 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 still, you said there that you're coming out party and stuff like that, so you, you've yet to experience in that. You, you, you are a cool, calm, collective guy. I know how cool you are and how relaxed you are come fight week and stuff like that. How easy it is for somebody your size to make light, lightweight as well. So I'll go back to that question again. Do you think that right now you're, you're soaking it all in, but do you, you feel any, when you when you think about the press conference and the way in and the big, you're talking about the zone and Eddie Hearn and all that sort of stuff, do you get little butterflies in your stomach? Do you feel any, a little bit of pressure? Yeah, man, bits and bobs, like it is pressure, but uh, it's it's what I want, like it's what, yeah, yeah. it's what I've got into boxing for, you know what I mean? So I was chatting to somebody and they said, like I had, I had Vasquez was, uh, was confirmed for me maybe two or three weeks ago, so it was gonna be happening on the on the February eleventh MTK show, and then it's it's obviously been moved to March twelfth to the bigger show. So I was chatting to someone and they're saying like they've got a couple of reservations. May have it was a big fight, but it was on it was on the smaller card. Now it's a big fight and it's on a big platform, but 
that's what that's what I started boxing for. That's what I'm here for. Do you know what I mean? Big shows, bright lights. Um, it is a little bit of pressure, of course. It's it's a it's a it's a massive show. There's there's much more eyes on it, but mm-hmm. that's what it's all about, man. And it, I think it's just uh, it's important to soak it all in. Our careers are as boxers are very short, so uh, yeah, man. It's it's going to be memories to look back on when I'm when I'm finished. So. Uh, I'm just looking forward to soaking it all in and experiencing it all. Well, you definitely have deserved it, mate, because like you say, you've fought in these, these small hole shows with MTK and, and stuff like that, but it's time to obviously jump up now and, and showcase your skills at uh, uh, 9,000 fans and big platforms, like you said. But that being said as well, though, Gary, the Miguel Vasquez, you go on and beat M- Miguel Vasquez on March 12th. You don't want to come down the opponents. You don't want to come down. You're obviously looking up. Now, we've spoken yes. about this many times. That lightweight division is nasty. It is scary with Cambosis, Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, Devin Haney, Joe Diaz, Isaac Cruz, Richard Comey, Jorge Linares, Javi Fontura. Do you know what I mean? It's it's absolutely... Maxi Hughes as well will be here. Do you know what I mean? And, and Ricky Burns coming back in the lightweight division. So right now, it is an absolutely phenomenal, scary division. Uh, Javante Davis is hung, hanging about there still. Brian Garcia is there. Yes. We've got them two. I mean, when you hear all these names, mate, how far are you away from all this? I think after this fight, I'm ready. This is a, this is a test. This is a world level test. So, um, get Miguel Vasquez out of the way and pass that test with flying colours on March twelfth. And any of them names you just said, probably, probably maybe a, a fight or two away from the Haney's, the the Javante Davises, but your Maxi Hughes, your your Ricky Burns, Javier Fortunas. Uh, Jojo Diaz all these big fights that's but Andy I've just literally tweeted 20 minutes ago I've never turned down a step up I've never asked for an easy fight I'm chasing greatness and if we fall on the way fair enough but at least I'm striving for that do you know what I mean so I'm, I'm just I'm just a young kid that had a dream and I'm chasing that dream do you know what I mean so um, yeah, if if I if I fall along the way and trip up along the way, at, at least I did it doing something that I loved and doing something that I wanted to do. So I'm I'm striving for for the the, the highest of highs in boxing, and uh, I won't say no to any step ups. I won't say no to any of them big names that you're after saying. That's what that's what I join boxing for. I I think I always say that's what we join boxing for. But I think a lot of a lot of pros out there now maybe uh maybe join it for the Instagram bio, um. But I'm in I boxing. It. That's why. I yeah, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> box smart with my card. <laughs> but man, this is this is why I joined boxing. I grew up watching Mayweather versus Hatton and all these all these massive fights, and that's what I want to be involved in. So, um, yeah, it's that, that this stuff that this stuff that I'm being involved in now, even this Vasquez fight, this is what I used to dream about. Like, do you know what I mean? So, um, I'll never say no to them big fights and 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 them them big names. So. That's what it's all about for me. Definitely. And well said, man. Listen, when you get that Vegas fight, man, or New York fight, you know I'm coming with you, right? 100%. Coogan can have a weekend off, yeah? Exactly. Have the week off. Coogan, have the week off. <laughs> yeah, they finally You've been me. in America a bit, man. You've been in America. That was last you can year. take a break, yeah? That was last, last year. year, yeah. yeah this this is year's just year. started. <laughs> yeah, it's the new year, mate. I need to kickstart it all over again. Um. Yeah, you mentioned the, the Irish fans going over to Nottingham, the platform, the zone and stuff like that. So for everybody that's going to be watching on the zone, that's going to be in the arena, the 9,000 plus fans that are going to be there, what can they expect from Gary Cully? Explosive performance. Um, like I said, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to say my best performance today because I've put in some big performances mm-hmm. and I don't want to put any pressure on myself to top them performances, but an explosive, uh, an explosive win a mature performance and uh, you're just going to see skills. You're going to see how uh, how good I am and get used to seeing it because I'll be jumping out of the ring and chasing Eddie for that contract as soon as I'm out of the ring. So, yeah, get used to seeing it as well. There you go. Listen, I'm sure Eddie will be... I'm sure if you put in a great performance, Eddie will have that big contract set waiting for you. I'm sure of it, mate. Yes, for <laughs> sure. He better get it ready. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Just obviously, just keep doing what you're doing, then, Gary. That's as simple as that. Keep doing, beating everyone that's in front of you, and I'm sure that your the, the greatness and the luck will come your way. That's the plan, my man. Definitely, bro. Listen, Gary, go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for doing this Firefell TV and uh, March 12th, mate. I can't wait. Thank you, Andy, and I'll chat to you beforehand. I'm sure, but yeah, 
Um, thank you for the time as always, pal. Yeah. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Speak to you soon. Nice, man. See you in a bit. In a bit.